Tonight, the Vancouver Canucks play their second-last game of the season against the Edmonton Oilers. The Canucks of the 2016 and the 2017 season have been bad. Let's not sugarcoat that. The Canucks, 30 wins, 41 losses, 9 overtime losses so far. They got two games left in the season. The last one is uh, tomorrow. Second last one's tonight. But despite the team being in the position it is now, like, I mean, they're last in the Pacific, and the Canucks do have a chance to clinch the second best draft lottery odds tonight, all depending on, I believe, uh, New Jersey and Arizona, something like that. But really, take a look at the team on paper and you say, wow, these guys are horrible. 30 wins, and their top point guy was Bo Horvat. Their vets have really stepped down. Horvat has stepped up. He's at 51 points right now. And, you know, it's just unfortunate to see a team like Vancouver be where they're at now. But there were a lot of great things that happened this season. And although the team really finished in a place that everyone thought they would, I mean, we were expected to get 65 points. What are we at now? 69. The most we can get is 73. Is that really a big improvement over the 65 prediction that everyone had for us? Of course not. We're not close to a playoff spot at all. We are at the bottom of the Pacific, and we have a chance to clinch the second best draft lottery odds. So that just shows where the Canucks are now. But if you take a look at the team and the players, and the position we're in now, this was a great season. And I'm not saying that because, all oh, the Sedins, check out the Sedins, 48 points and 42 points, they're so good. No, I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying, take a look at the lines we've got. Daniel, Henrik, and Godolbin. Godolbin is Hansen's replacement. Godolbin is a new young guy that we got from the Sharks. Reed Boucher, we picked him off of waivers, I believe. Bo Horvat, we drafted him, he's doing great. He's at 51 points. Brock Besser has been finishing for the Canucks. He's 20 years old and he's doing great. It's amazing being able to watch Brock Besser like this. Um, Chapu, he's fairly young. He's 24, I believe. So yeah, we can count him as a young guy. Sutter is a guy. He's probably going to be staying around here for a while. Then on the fourth line, we got ourselves Griffin Molino. Molino is a guy that we picked up on free agency. He almost got a goal in the last game. That was really nice. Drew Shore is also a young guy that we got. Our best defender is arguably Troy Stetcher, Richmond native. He's a young guy too. Ben Hutton is also another guy that we picked up from college recently. He's young as well. Triamkin is young. Tanev is, uh, he's middle-aged, but he'll probably be on the team for a while. Him and Edler are the two guys that are interchangeable based on who will be on the team longer. One of those guys is probably going to get traded, but... The point that I'm trying to bring up here is the Canucks really have moved away from the vets of the 2011 team. We're no longer the Sedins, Burroughs, Hanson, Hamus. We're not those guys anymore. We're the Sedins with a whole bunch of younger guys and Louis Erickson, as well as two goaltenders who are actually doing fairly well. I mean, Miller, he's a good goalie. I'm not gonna say that Miller is a bad guy. I like how Miller's been playing. Miller's been really solid throughout his whole tenure here in Vancouver. And the whole mumbo-jumbo thing with Eddie Lack and Jacob Markstrom, it's, you know, we're just setting up a good environment for Thatcher Demko to come in potentially next season. Um, you take a look at the injury list, we got a few injuries, Dorsett, Goodbranson, um, Louis Erickson, yeah, Marcus Granlin's another guy who's young and I think is gonna be a great player for us, Sven Berchi as well, um, those guys we picked off from Calgary, as well as Anton Rodin, I guess, I mean, take a look at the players we've got in our organization and you won't really see that many old guys, which is a great thing. Of course it sucks now, because the Canucks are almost second last in the league, but think about things five years from now. Think about what if we went into this stage five years ago? What if after the 2012 collapse against the LA Kings, 
the Canucks just said, okay, screw it. We're going to get rid of Kessler. We're going to get rid of um, Hamus. We're getting rid of all these guys. We're bringing in some new core younger players, maybe like a Sam Reinhardt or um, Evgeny Svechnikov, something like that. You know, you know, hint, hint. Um, what if we brought in a whole bunch of younger guys five years ago? Where would we be now? I believe that we would be a very competitive team right now. Because five years is quite a bit. Five years is enough years to make the Sedins go from 30 to 35 or 36. Five years is a big development period for kids who were drafted in 2012. Take a look at that draft class now. These guys are now like 24, 23. These guys are starting to enter their prime. And we're entering this phase where all the Canucks have become immersed in this young identity. You got Godolbin that we brought in. You got Dolan that we brought in. We got Besser that we brought in. Griffin Molino who we brought in. All these new, young, core talents that will stick around for a while. And sure, some of these guys might not be a good fit for the future. And some of these guys, I'm sure, will be traded to get even younger guys. But I think the owners are allowing Jim Benning to do his magic and to work with the team that he sees, which is great because we now know that Jim Benning is on our side. It appears that he will no longer be trying to build a team that he deems is playoff ready and playoff competitive and playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. We need to get a whole bunch of older guys and vets to help stabilize our team so we can make the playoffs like Louis Erickson. No, 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 no. He's on our side now. And these moves that he's making, they're symbolizing a new step in a new direction. So despite this season being bad, take a look at the team. We're young. I think it's valid to say that we're young. We have the Sedins and Ryan Miller and Louis Erickson, but we're still a young team. We are the Vancouver Canucks. We're young. We sucked this year, but it'll be better next year. It'll be better in the next year. It'll be better in the year after that. Once we keep on growing our young players, we give them the playing time, we develop some players in the AHL, we bring up NHL-ready players, we submerge them in an environment that's got this leadership core and the Sedins and Edler and Louis Erickson, all these Swedish guys who will help mentor our younger kids. We got guys who are already leaders like Bo Horvat. I'd say Brock Besser's a leader as well. Take a look at the players we're going to bring in next year. Thatcher Demko. Oli Olivi, some other potential free agent signings that we're going to have that are going to be guys below 25. We're a young team, and this team is going to get younger, and it's going to proceed through the ranks, through the years, as a team that grows together and builds off of each other. And by the time 2023 rolls around, this team is going to be a competitive team. Jim Benning won't put the team in the position to suffer for five more years. Mike Gillis already made that mistake, and now Benning is finally being allowed to recover and finally being allowed to do what he knows is right. So the Vancouver Canucks, we suck this year, but it'll be better next year. We're going to have some great seasons coming up, and a big part of that is being able to watch the team grow and develop during these times, during the dark times, during the times when the Sedins are getting only 40 points, during the times when our top goal scorer is at 20 goals, during the times where watching our team is kind of embarrassing because you look at the Sedins and you're like, they've given up on this coach. The makeup of this team is bad at the moment, but over time, this will improve. And there are a lot of things that I got wrong about this season. Louis Erickson was not really a good fit for the Canucks. I mean, look at where he's at. He has 11 goals and 13 assists. Definitely not the 60-point guy he was last year. But the Canucks, they're going to build themselves up over the offseason. We're going to get some more players. We're going to be great one day. One day. Not soon, but one day. And it's an experience being able to watch the team develop at this stage. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for Boston Controls, Lang Lobster, Gaming, and bye.